This Christmas in July, we're blending sleek, brutalist elements with the cozy warmth of holiday traditions to transform your home decor. Have you ever dreamed of combining these contrasting styles? Keep watching to discover unique DIYs that will bring a fresh, innovative twist to your festive decorations. Hi, Utori Zoku. This is Imari from Always Utori. On this channel, we cover fashion, food, and lifestyle. Always Utori is about empowering you to bring enchantment into your life. For today's enchantment, we're circling back to a video we posted this past December. If any of you have wondered how to make the DIYs that were featured in our neutral decor ideas for Christmas vignette, this video is for you. And if you missed that video and are curious about how to decorate with the DIYs in this video, then watch our Natural Decor Ideas Decorate With Me video. These projects were inspired by our smoked gray and iced vanilla color story and are informed by brutalist design style. With that, it's time to make some enchantment. Our first project is faux concrete ornaments. Concrete is a major element of brutalist style, but can be a little tricky to work with. So this faux concrete is perfect to get the look without the hassle. To create faux concrete, we're going to mix baking soda with paint. It's as simple as that. I'm using gray acrylic paint and then pouring in some baking soda next to it. I used a paintbrush to scoop the baking soda into the paint and mix it together. I added baking soda until the paint began to resemble actual wet concrete, but you can experiment with how much to add. Once it was mixed to my liking, I began painting some clear Christmas baubles I got from Dollar Tree. This project is also a great way to upcycle any baubles you might be tired of or that need a refresh. I used a bamboo skewer to hold the baubles while I painted and also had some cups set up to place the skewers in so the baubles could dry. It's important to think about your brush strokes. For example, you can tell on the first coat that I used shorter strokes and the texture dried in the pattern of my brush strokes. You can get creative here and do long or short strokes, swirls, zigzags, or whatever, but it's important to think about so you get the effect you want. I did four in a gray color, then switched to brown. The process is the same. I mixed the baking soda into the acrylic paint and then painted four baubles with the color. Once the first set dry, I mixed up more gray paint and did a second coat. Here you can see better how the first layer of paint affects the overall look of the ornament. For the brown ornaments, I decided to go lighter with an ivory spray paint. Once everything was dry, I added the toppers back on and painted them in the same color as the ornaments. And here are the finished ornaments. Next, we're making an unconventional wreath. I really liked the design of this one I saw on Pinterest, so I tried to recreate something similar. To me, it looks like the inspiration wreath was made out of metal. To create a similar effect, I used one half inch diameter PEX pipe. It's usually used for water piping, but one reason I went with this is that it's flexible enough to be bent into shape, but also strong enough to hold its shape after it's bent. It's also affordable. You can get two feet of piping from Home Depot for $2.64 when I last checked. I didn't get it on camera, but I used an existing wreath form to measure out the size of the wreath. If your piping is longer than the size of the wreath you want, you can use a pipe cutter, box knife, or even a kitchen knife to cut the piping. It's soft enough to cut easily at home. I used duct tape to tape each end together so I could get a circle shape. I overlapped the ends and let it sit like that for a bit. I decided to unwrap the tape because I wanted to see if I could get the ends to meet up, but that ended up creating more of a teardrop shape. It's up to you if you want to keep the ends overlapping and have more of a perfect circle, or if you want it to be more of a teardrop shape. I re-taped it to keep it secure. This part will be painted over and covered later so you won't be able to see it. Next, I'm using some metal rods I had from a broken shoe rack. Dowel rods will work just as well in place of the metal rods, and the diameter doesn't matter as long as it's less than the one half inch PEX pipe we're using. I'm also using a wooden plaque from Dollar Tree. I'm lining up and measuring where I want to place the rods on the wreath and on the plaque. You want the rods to be centered and also an equal distance from each other. I marked where I wanted them and then drilled a hole. I don't have a drill bit as big as the rods, so I had to move the drill around until I could create a hole big enough for them to fit. Once I got the holes drilled, I spray painted the plaque black. Then I painted the piping with gray and then black. The gray isn't necessary. I was using it as a primer for the black to bounce off of. 
Also, I would recommend drilling into the piping first, which you will see me do next, and then painting it. It's not too big of a deal, but when I went to drill the holes so the rod would fit in the pipe, some of the paint chipped off. It's not visible, but it would have been better to paint after. So here's where I'm drilling into the pipe so that the metal rods will fit inside. I marked where the rods sat when placed in the plaque so I would know where to drill. Again, my drill bit isn't big enough so I'm having to widen the hole by drilling against the edges. Once each hole is big enough, it's time to get to the fun part. I'm starting with some really pretty glitter picks I got from Hobby Lobby back during their Labor Day sale. I got them for $2.99 instead of the $4.99 they're marked with. The metal they're attached to was too thick, so I ended up clipping the branches and layering them with some faux pampas grass I got from Amazon and some crystal flower stems that I got from Timu. I used some craft wire to secure the bundles together and then attached them to the PEX frame. Unlike with a wire wreath form, there isn't much for the wire to grip, so I also added a little hot glue to the bottom of the bundles to keep them from sliding around. I continued this process layering new bundles under the first and going up the left side of the wreath. After going about halfway up the left side, I added a few bundles at the bottom of the wreath to make sure the bottom part was well covered. I added one more bundle at the top along with some bells I got from Hobby Lobby. I arranged it so the bells would hang down the center of the wreath. Next, I added hot glue into the base of the wreath so that the support sticks would be secure. I actually tried it with E6000 glue, but it took too long to dry so the supports kept leaning over with the weight of the wreath. I found hot glue worked best for getting them attached quickly without having to worry about it being able to support the weight. I added a little bit of hot glue to the bells to keep them from moving from how I wanted them to hang. Then I attached two of the faux concrete ornaments I made with hot glue. I tied some twine ribbons in the hooks to add some rustic charm. I'm adding a few twigs that I got from my backyard and aligning them diagonally to bring the eye across the wreath in a similar way to the inspiration picture. I used hot glue to secure it to the bottom of the wreath and a little to secure it to the frame of the wreath where it extended out. I sprayed the twigs with some spray adhesive and sprinkled glass glitter on top to add an iced effect. And this is the finished wreath. The next project is wire trees. I'm starting with some craft or sculpting wire. I'm not sure what thickness I used, but you could probably even do this with thin craft wire. I formed the wire into a circle about four inches in diameter and then used thin craft wire to secure both ends of the circle together. Then I made a smaller circle about one inch in diameter. These are going to be the structural base to attach the mesh. I got this mesh from Amazon. I actually don't really like it. I wanted something that looked more like chicken wire and this looks more like mesh you would get for a scrub brush, but I made do with it. I wrapped the mesh around the wire to measure how much I needed and then cut the mesh with scissors. To attach the mesh to the base, I took a piece of wire that detached from the mesh when I cut it and wove it through the mesh around the base. You can also do this with thin craft wire. To start, I wrapped the wire around the same area a few times to make sure it was secure, then wove my way around the base until the mesh was secure all the way around. If your wire runs out, tuck the end flush with the base and continue with a new piece. Once you reach the end, you can take the wire and weave it through both ends of the mesh so they are attached to each other. I overlapped the ends of my mesh, creating a tapered effect so the tree will begin to create a cone shape.
Next, I took the smaller circle and attached it to the mesh with a piece of wire. I cut more mesh to fit around the smaller circle and I tried to shape it into a cone shape. I cut more mesh to fit around the smaller circle and I tried to shape it into more of a cone. When you're measuring the mesh, make sure to do a little more than you think you'll need. This time I ended up short because I thought it fit around the circle but when I attached it I don't think I stretched it out enough. Attach the second layer of mesh in the same way as before. When you get to the end, weave the wire through both ends of the mesh, attaching both sides. I used my hands to try to shape it a bit more. As they sit or are touched, the shape can deform a bit, so use your hands to help manipulate it into your desired shape. I decided to make one more with the goal of it being a little smaller than the first one. Again, I mismeasured the mesh and was a bit short when I got to the end. On the first one, I left the hole, but on this one, I tried fixing it by cutting out a small piece of mesh and attaching it to the rest of the mesh as I wove the two sides together. I don't think you can tell that the piece is added, so if you have this problem, this is an easy fix. The process is the same as the first one, except that I made the top layer a little shorter so it would be smaller. Once they were done, I spray painted them a chrome color so they would fit better with the smoked gray and iced vanilla color theme. Then I used adhesive spray and sprinkled glass glitter on top to give them an iced look. Here are the final trees. The next project is my favorite of the bunch. We're making cowbells. These have become a really popular winter decor item, but they can be on the pricier side. I've seen several DIYs for how to make them yourself, but I've got an easy hack to make them look even more realistic. I tried a couple different techniques so the bells aren't all uniform. You can pick the style you like best. To start, use a box knife to cut the bottom off of an aluminum can. I cleaned up any unevenness or rough edges with scissors. I didn't really pay attention to how much I was cutting off, so each bell was a little different in size. If you want uniformity, you could measure how tall you want the bells to be and cut them all to the same height. For the first style, I cut one side of the can. It doesn't matter what side you cut, but I chose to follow the marking on the can to pick where to make the cut. I pushed the cut ends inward to get them to overlap. Next, I'm using a weeding tool which has a very sharp point but is small in width to create a hole near the bottom of the can. If you don't have a weeding tool, you can use a similar sharp object like a thumbtack or needle. Make sure to get both layers of the can. Next, I took a mini paper brad tack and put it in the hole. I used the weeding tool to help press down the legs of the tack on the inside of the can. You will need some kind of tool to help you get started, especially the further up in the can you get, but I also found that often it was easier to use my fingers to press the legs down securely. Make another hole midway up the can, being careful that both sides of the can are connected and place a tack in the hole. Do this one more time at the top of the can. If you can't get both sides easily, that's alright. As long as you can get the tack in one side, you can create the illusion of both sides being connected. Optionally, you could skip the cutting altogether and just poke a hole up the side and then place the tack, like I did on this one. But I think the combo of cutting the can plus the tack makes for a more realistic looking bell. I watched several videos on how they make cowbells in both Portugal and Austria, and one of the things that stood out to me was how they shape the metal. It's the part of the process that is the most difficult, so by cutting the cans we can sort of mimic the shaping process and get a more tapered look as well as create the illusion that our cans have been welded and tacked together. Next, we're making the bell clapper. It won't sound as melodious as a real cowbell, 
but it will make a low clinking sound. I use scissors to twist the tab off the can. I also removed the pull tab, but don't do that. I ended up gluing it back on later. When I twisted the inner tab, it curled around the scissors. I'm keeping it this way. I cut a length of craft wire and used hot glue to attach the tab to the wire. Then I re-glued the tab back on the top and hooked the wire around the tab. Since you didn't remove the pull tab, simply pull it forward so that it hangs over the opening. I used some pliers to indent the can around the edges to give it some more shape. For this option, I also attached an empty fruit cup to give it a more curved appearance. It's not my favorite, but it does resemble a bell. It would have been better if I could have trimmed down the edge, but the plastic was too thick to cut through. Next is the second option. The method is the same. Use a box cutter to cut the bottom off. Fix and trim rough edges with scissors, but instead of cutting a line up one side, we're cutting both sides. This version is my favorite, and I think it creates such a lovely tapered shape, more similar to an actual cowbell. Attaching the clapper is the same as before as well. Twist the inner tab off with scissors, attach a length of craft wire, and hook it around the pull tab. Do be careful as metal easily conducts heat, so the clapper can take a while to cool down. Now we're going to use the base of the can as a topper to give us our domed shape. Cut the thicker part off the bottom of the can, getting as close to the edge as possible. Then flip the dome inside out and attach to the top of the can with hot glue. This can also get hot, so be careful as you press down. Next, I tried it with a different type of aluminum can. I got this from a vending machine and saved it to try with this project. I thought the tall and slim shape might make for an interesting bell. I followed the same process as before, except on this one, the top will be different because of the shape. I cut off a piece of aluminum and glued it to a string. Then I glued that to the inside of the cap of the bottle. This is a project you can definitely experiment with things you have around the house to see how it changes the shape of the bell. So once all the bells were made, there's one final step. I'm making a bell hook with scrap pieces of aluminum and extra cans I had. I cut a wide strip of aluminum. I didn't measure the sizes. Then I looped it and attached the ends. I used hot glue to attach them to the tops of the bells. I used scissors to press it down because it gets pretty hot. I will say, not all of them stayed on and I had to re-glue them a bit. I put glue along the edges to make sure they were secured, and this also adds to the welded effect once we paint them. Now that we have all of our bells made, it's time to paint them. Since I'm working with a color theme, I envisioned these being an off-white vanilla color, so went with an ivory spray paint and a gloss finish. But of course, you can do the traditional gold or whatever color you want. Once you have them painted, it's important to do some additional detail painting to further the realism. I tried two different things, then ended up using a combination of the two. I started by mixing some acrylic paint together to create a khaki color. I mixed a little brown, white, and gray, and then added some water so it wouldn't be as concentrated. I used a paper towel to dab it on the tacks and created a line down the tack area to mimic a welded piece of metal. I also painted around the top of the bell to give dimension to any parts where metal would be welded and to add weathering. I also tried dabbing it around the body to give it more of a weathered and multidimensional look. Next, I tried some wax in a brown color and applied it with a paper towel to the same areas. You have to wipe the wax off after it sits for a few minutes. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two methods. 
The wax is much more subtle and the paint has a bit more control over how you want it to look. But the wax was a bit faster to apply. Let me know in the comments below which one you liked best. I ended up using a combo of the two to finish the bells, using the paint in crevices and places I wanted a stronger emphasis, and I used the wax to give the subtle dimensionality. Once you've finished painting them and letting them dry, you can use them however you want. I decided to create a hanging piece using an antique cattle yoke I found at Goodwill for $14.99. I measured out twine and looped it five times to create a thick rope look. I actually measured everything with the intention of the bells in the center hanging down the longest and getting shorter as they went out, but coincidentally and probably because my bells were all slightly different lengths, it ended up being a nearly perfect asymmetrical line from short to long. I attached the bells to the yoke by tying a knot around the loop we created and then tying it around the wood. Continue this with the rest of the bells. And here is the finished project. The next project is a wooden cutting board place setting. I'm starting with some cutting board blanks that I got from Amazon. By the way, I will have links in the description box for some of the materials I've mentioned in the video. I painted the boards with black chalk paint. While the first side was drying, I began to make some molds out of hot glue. I had these ornament molds and chose to do the one with a woodland theme. To make these, all you need to do is add glue to the mold until it's full. It definitely helps to have the hot glue well heated. Also, make sure the nooks and crannies are covered. It can be easy to miss a spot and that can create gaps in the finished ornament. While that cooled, I painted the other side of the cutting boards. I made four cutting boards, so I also made four ornaments. I experimented with what color to paint the ornaments, originally trying a white base with some pops of color, but ended up not liking it. I gave the cutting boards two coats of paint and then also made sure to get the edges. I ended up painting the ornaments black with the same chalk paint as I used on the cutting boards. Once everything was dry, I attached the ornaments to the board with hot glue. I felt like it was still missing something, so I made some border pieces also with hot glue. I painted them all black. And then I cut them to fit the board. Two long pieces on each side, then two smaller pieces on the bottom and top. I definitely could have cut them so that they would be more seamless, but I didn't think about that until I had already gotten into it. So if I did it again, I would have cut the borders at an angle rather than follow the shape of the mold. These can serve as place settings and name tags like how we use them in our vignette or you can use them as decor around the house or even as a way to upgrade a gift you're giving. Okay, here's a bonus project. If you watched our Decorate With Me Cozy Christmas video, then you will have already seen this, but I thought I would add it here as well because it's a quick and easy project. Next, I'm placing a little holiday themed book stack. I ended up building this on the fly. This is a popular DIY this year, and I've seen it all over YouTube and Pinterest. I picked out these books from my bookshelf because they fit with the smoked gray and the earthiness of the iced vanilla color theme. They are old vintage books, so I think it looks more rustic and adds a feeling of old holiday traditions. That is, if you don't read the titles of the book. I secured the books together with some craft garland and some beads, which I tied off behind the books. I grabbed a black and white ribbon and made a four loop bow. I 
thought it would be nice to add a bell, so I secured both the bell, which is left over from some of last year's DIYs, and the bow with some wire. I tucked the tail of the wire in between the book so you couldn't see it. I finished it off by placing some miniature bottle brush trees on top of the books. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see more DIYs and lifestyle content. Let me know in the comments which project you like best and want to make. And finally, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And remember, enchantment awaits, life is just about finding it.